Now in this video I want to talk about the last biomes that we have left which are the polar regions and the mountainous weather. Now basically here you see the biome that's one of the most common in the very cold areas of the world. We call it a boreal forest. Now a boreal forest is basically uh, kind of like a tempered woodland but with a little more space between the trees. There's going to be a little less water perhaps or not a lot of nutrition or sunlight or something that allows them to grow a more as luscious as the temperate woodland was. Now remember the temperate woodland was already kind of limited, this was a little more. But the, the few trees that are here, they do tend to grow very, very tall and they're going to be either like old oak trees or pine trees and they're going to be very interesting and you've seen those movies uh, that are sometimes set here, especially lots of scary movies and you see the um, wolves and bunnies and things like that, there's, there's the kind of places that, where they live. So border forests tend to be a little colder than the other forests which were in the temperate biomes but there is some overlap between the temperate biomes and the, and the arctic biomes when it comes to to these kinds of forests and it will see a little more water than it normally would in the top polar regions remember the polar regions don't see a lot of rain because it's so cold so there's not a lot of evaporation so you're not going to get a lot of rain because of that uh, either way here you see one of the types of biomes that you will get in polar regions when there is a lot more humidity but notice that the temperatures will be colder than in other temperate biomes this is what you see when there is not a lot of water and it is cooled, even even colder than the forest that we just described was. By the way, the Boreas forest is sometimes referred as taiga and this one is sometimes referred as tundra. Another name for it is basically a, um, Arctic grassland. Now the Arctic grasslands are what they call, they, they sound like. They're very cold and they're grasslands, but their grass here is going to be less luscious than the temperate grasslands or the savanna grasslands. There's going to be less productivity, less nutrients, less sunlight, less everything. In fact, the majority of the year, these grasslands will be covered with ice permanently, and that's how it is in Siberia or in Greenland where these things are common. And they're going to be covered with ice most of the time. And then when the ice melts, you see this little thin layer of grass that comes back during the spring and summer months. Now the interesting thing about the tundra, it, other than the fact that it does actually support a very vast ecosystem of animals that actually come during the summer months to eat here, they tend to either migrate away or actually go hibernate during the winter, but either way it does, they have to cope with these changes in the environment just like, like the plants kind of hibernate under the snow or wait for the next season to grow again. Uh, sometimes some of them are annual plants that you know they die off, but in the next season their seeds are there and they come back. Now. Some of them actually make it through the, through the winter. Now these plants have to be adapted to grow on very, very tiny soil because there's not a lot of soil in, in, this, in this actual ecosystem because the majority of the soil is actually frozen. There's a thin active layer on the top which does not support things like big trees and that's why you rarely ever see trees in this grassland. Meanwhile, right underneath that active soil you have what's something that's called permafrost. The, fr the soil itself is permanently frozen. And underneath that, you may have more soil still. But the interesting thing about permafrost, you see a tiny picture of how it looks like. It's literally frozen soil. Now, underneath that frozen soil, you may have dead stuff from thousands of years ago, back when this grassland was not even here. Maybe the, the ecosystem used to be different when the continents were somewhere else. Before continental drift made the continents go into the polar regions, you may have had a forest there. But this permafrost that grew over all that dead stuff is trapping all the gases that, from the decay of these plants. We call them methane reserves. Now, we actually mine that in, in some places of the earth. But interesting thing, though, is that if the permafrost actually melts, all, the, all of that methane gas is likely to f go to the atmosphere, so seep out to the atmosphere. But remember, the methane is a greenhouse gas. So that means that if global warming makes the permafrost melt, Another greenhouse gas is going to leak into the atmosphere and make it even more hotter in the planet. So it's something that we are watching as we go into the 21st century and have to worry about global warming. We're monitoring the amount of permafrost that's melting in the Arctic regions. Very interesting ecosystem. It's called tundra. I mean, remember, the forest was called taiga. Two more ecosystems we have to talk about. The polar ecosystems. These are the fact the frozen wastelands. They're under deserts of the poles, polar regions. Basically, bare ever precipitation is just frozen all the time, but you still have teeming with life. And most of the life is going to be based on the water, where a lot of the life uh, can live, because the water uh, is kind of like the coldest it gets is zero degrees. And if, you know, below that, it doesn't get too cold, you know. So that means that the water 
even if it gets even when it's saltier and it gets a little lower than than than, than that, like a negative two, negative three, if it freezes underneath that, it's going to be warmer. So the life forms on the water get to live in this kind of ecosystem, and things like you know polar bears and penguins they live and fight through this. By the way, a lot of them tend to be uh, hibernate during the winter or to have low activity levels during the winter when uh, basically it's very, very inhospitable to live in a place like this, and yet they still do it. They face the winter on these locations. So you see, life finds a way even in the frozen deserts of the world. Another interesting ecosystem is mountain weather. Now, if you watch the actual lecture series about climates, I talk about the fact that as you go higher and higher in the atmosphere, temperatures get lower and lower because the air is getting thinner and thinner and the heat is being shared less and less between molecules. And this actually happens at a constant rate, about one degree for every 100 meters you go up in the troposphere. Now, what ends up happening because of that is that mountains, as you go higher and higher in the mountains, it gets colder and colder. And because it's getting colder and colder, the ecosystems in the mountains will change as you go higher into the mountains. So you're going to have these levels in the mountains, and literally you're going to go from one level to the next as you go higher and higher. The very top will look like a polar region of the world, where there's basically a, a frozen wasteland. But if you go a little lower than that, you might have some grasslands, and lower than that, you might have some coniferous forests or boreal forest kind of things. And if you go lower than that, you might have more of a temperate forest or a deciduous forest, a broadleaf forest. And if you go a little lower than that, you might actually have a tropical dry forest or actual dry forest. It all depends on how hot the environment is and how much rain the rain gets. But you will see that pattern of changing ecosystems as you go higher and higher in the mountain. And it's something that's interesting to know about. Mountains like a, a mini world. As you go higher and higher, it's almost as if you're going uh, into towards the poles from the equator. You know, so it's like you're going up the latitude, it's getting colder. Same thing here, if you go up the altitude, it also gets colder and you see that pattern happening. So that concludes our discussion about the land biomes. I hope you had a lot of fun and learned some of the things that, uh, some of the patterns, the interesting things about ecosystems around the world. We'll try to learn a little bit more about it in class. See you guys then.